Hello, welcome to the Moto Show. Uh, this time it's just myself here. Mr. Chuss is behind the camera here, so if anything's out of focus, it's his fault. Morning, Ray. Um, we've also got a replacement for Ray in the form of Dave King from Liat. Morning, Dave. Good morning. What's your role, what's your role at Liat? Yep, uh, I'm the brand manager for Off-Road in the UK. Marvellous. Okay, as you can see, we've got a, a brand new helmet from uh, Liat. It's a Liat GPX 6.5. Um, first off, Dave, to, to look at the thing, great looking helmet. This is a carbon one. Looks smaller than, uh, than the conventional helmet. Yeah, uh, there's a reason for that. Um, basically, the smaller the outer shell, the closer you can get it to your head, the less head and neck forces are generated when you're in a collision. So actually, when you crash, you, you haven't got such a heavy helmet on and you're not going to exactly. pull your neck quite as much. If you can imagine, you, if you had a helmet of this size on your head, when you hit the ground, the forces to your head and neck are, are huge. So to try and get it as close to your head is, is possible. So how much smaller is it compared to a, to a conventional lid? It varies between 11 and 24% smaller than the helmets that are on the market now. Well, it's going to make quite a, quite, quite, a, quite a difference in there. Um, lots of vents in the out, uh, outside. Presumably this is, uh, this is quite a cool helmet to, to wear in all conditions? <clears throat> yeah. Um, basically, the Venturi system, which is used in pretty well every other helmet that you can buy, does work, but it tends to work over 50 miles an hour, um, and we rarely go that speed. So the idea is to get as much heat out of the helmet as you can. So these vents are... DOT spike tested, so they pass the American DOT spike test, and you've got 190 honeycomb holes to relieve the, the temperature. So you don't have to be, you know, say in, in a mud race when you're going that much slower, yeah. you're still getting the air, air flow through. Exactly, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you, you, gen you sweat when you're wearing a crash helmet anyway, so the most important thing is to get that heat out of the helmet to keep yourself cool. Great stuff. Um, I mean, in terms of the technology that's inside there, again, you Liat have gone in a different direction as to what's actually, what's actually inside there. Are there elastomers inside? Yeah, basically, um, we use uh, these, which are um, called turbines, um, and they act as a damper for, to re help reduce concussion and also a moving, sliding layer between your skull and the helmet to help reduce brain rotation. And brain rotation is a particular problem that causes, that, that, that causes a lot, a lot of issues uh, from, from motorcycle crashes. Yeah, it's actually, um, please Google it, um, what tends to come up is motorcycle, car and also American football. Because you mustn't get confused speed with impact. You can have a very serious accident um, uh, at a very low speed, but a high energy impact, um, which is what our sport is. So these help reduce the brain rotation inside your skull, when your, your, your skull comes to, into contact with the crash helmet, your brain moves slightly inside your skull because it sits in fluid. These help reduce that. Great stuff. And I've noticed on, on, the, uh, on the desk here, we've also got something we prepared, prepared earlier. Um, this is a cross-section of the other foam, I believe. Yeah, it is. The reason how we've been able to make the, the shell smaller is, basically, we've combined the outer shell is part of the um, V-foam inside. How we've been able to achieve that is basically the, the male part you can see here in white, that's pushed inside the helmet, and the black section you can see here is then injected. So all these, um, all these crevices you can see here, the design on the helmet, that's all filled with V-foam, which is why when you hold the helmet and push it in the middle, you don't hear any creaking. So it's all in, integral built, so built into the helmet. The shell and the, v and, the, um, and the foam is one part. And the lining we've got in there, fully removable and washable? It is, yeah. That Again, I would say that the lining probably will change slightly because this is a, a really pre-production helmet. But uh, yes, it is removable, washable. Basically, uh, every helmet be hydration ready. So the hydration system can just slide straight through there, round into the, into the so no more drilling of your helmet. Great stuff. Always, always a thing to avoid. Yeah. Um, the, the, the final thing I, I noticed, because I have been actually reading on it, um, something a bit different about the peak as well. In the event of a crash, what happens to the peak? Yeah, basically, um, obviously it's important, again, for forces to the head and neck, that the peak comes off when you, when you have a collision into the ground. You want the peak to come off. So the, there's four break-off points with each screw. So the peak comes off um, very easily once you hit the ground but then you're always annoyingly left with a stud that you've got to try and get out. But what we've done is put a little Allen key inside the stud so you can just wind the stud straight out, put some new studs in, done. Marvellous. So go straight to bullet helmet, helmet look without, yeah. without you d dig digging into the ground. Absolutely. Marvellous. Yeah. I think the final question, when, when is mine coming? Um, as soon as possible. Um, yeah, the carbon helmet will retail for £400. Uh, the composite, which is uh, exactly the same safety features, pass all the same standards, will be um, 320 for a design and 290 for a plain white. Fantastic. Looks a great bit of kit. We can't wait to see it on the market. Thanks for coming in this morning. You're welcome.